Let's have a look at the drugs which are based on the monoamine theory. Here's our synapse again, and we can see various points at which the neurotransmitter can be taken up. Once it's released, it can attach to a receptor, which is what we want to bring a response. But some of them, instead of, instead of doing that, will be taken up by pumps and then recycled back into the cell again, or they might attach to autoreceptors and activate inhibition of further release of neurotransmitter, or alternatively, they might get chewed up by degrading enzymes. I quite like that phrase, degrading enzyme, such as monoamino oxidases. So this, any of these fates could happen to these, and so there are different ways in which we can stop this from happening and thereby increase the amount of neurotransmitter which should cure the depression. So let's take the first one then. Let's imagine some of these molecules are going to be taken up by a reuptake pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a way of blocking this reuptake pump. And that's what is done by tricyclic antidepressants, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, and serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors. Let's have a look at those a little bit more closely, shall we? So the first thing is the tricyclic antidepressants. These are the oldest ones. And a classic example of this is imipramine. What does imipramine look like? Well, this is imipramine. And you can see it's got three rings on the left there. And those three rings are what's met, what, what, what makes it a tricyclic. You see, three cycles, tricyclic antidepressants. And lots of other drugs look a, li a little bit like this as well. Very similar sort of family. So the tricyclic antidepressants, they're quite an old and they also have some disadvantages. For example, they're non-selective, non-selective, so they also hit histamine receptors and cause drowsiness. They also block muscarinic acetylcholine receptors and this has caused all sorts of other problems as well. The other one is a much more serious one, is that they're also a drug used in suicide. And so they've largely been replaced with SSRIs and SNRIs. Let's have a look at SSRIs. These are serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors. Now what's happening here, so they, they selectively act on a, a subtype of these pumps here, which are reuptake pumps, which are which pick up serotonin. So basically you've got within the same inner neuron or in a cell, you might you have some pumps which pick up which suck up 5 HT and other pumps which are very similar which suck up noradrenaline. And the SSRIs prefer these over the noradrenaline ones. When you look at the SNRIs, these are the serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, they tend to prefer, well they don't have much of a preference between them at all. So basically what you've got is you've got a scale 
a preference for 5-HT or noradrenaline and different drugs lie in different locations. So these sort of in the middle, very unselective and SSRIs much more for 5-HT. So that's blocking reuptake. Another thing we can do is to, so that's the, these guys here, are blocking the reuptake pump. Another thing we can do is have a look at this degrading enzyme and see if we can block that. And that is done by things like the Mao Mauis. So what are they? They are monoamino oxidase inhibitors. Now I should point out at this point that although I've drawn Maui outside the neuron in, uh, in the other drawings, in fact it's actually inside the neuron itself. So let's just let's just redraw that slightly so that you get that. So here's our presynaptic terminal. Here we've got a rather enlarged um, vesicle. And what can happen is that even before they get released, these Mauis, sorry, these monoamino oxidases can actually eat them up and degrade them. So what we want is to inhibit those and that's in fact what Maui's do. So by inhibiting, inhibiting them effectively we can now get a build up of more neurotransmitter inside the vesicles and that causes more in the synaptic cleft. There are actually two types of two types of Maui. There's type A and type B. And type A is specific for 5-HT and noradrenaline. So then the third thing we can do is to try and stop the action of the autoreceptor because activating the autoreceptor results in cyclic AMP. So we want to stop, stop this from happening in some way. And that's done by using monoamine receptor antagonists. And the classic example of these is mirtazapine. So then, we've got three different approaches which enable us to eliminate the degrading enzyme, block the autoreceptor, or block the pump.